Hello, governor. How many people we got in here? Uh, there's seven in the live stream, and I'm not sure how many of the live stream people are in the Skype call. So. I'm in live stream. Pop in it, but otherwise, no. Okay. Um, well, we've got seven viewers, so uh, that's that's good enough for me. Uh, there's some people in the Skype call, and there's some people in the Steam group chat. There we go. Don't know how many of those are in the stream and Skype. I don't care. I'm gonna read a story now because I don't want to keep these people Stay waiting. Stay a while and listen. Luna, there's a sentient race living inside your main by Board Game Brony. It's this comedy random. It has 1,600 words. And the description is as follows. A fellow pony notices that Lu Princess Luna may have a serious problem. There's a small sentient race inside her mane, and they have been living there for quite some time. Luna must decide what to do about this. A random story I made to help bring up smiles. So here we go. Luna, there's a sentient race living inside your mane. By Board Game Brony. The princess of the night looked down at the small sea pony inspecting her mane. The outer garden of Ca Cantalot Castle was quite safe for the occasional guard, the princess, and the pony at her side. Pardon us, but who might you be, and why are you staring at our mane? Luna asked. I'm Ruby Sill, sister to the ambassador of the sea pony nation, but we have more serious matters at hoof, said the red-coated sea pony. You appear to have something living inside your mane. Luna examined the sea pony and her oil-stained blue overalls. Her green eyes inspected Luna's mane with microscope lenses on a pair of goggles. She raised the magnifier and nodded. Yup, I'm afraid to say this, but Luna, you have a sentient race living inside your mane. The princess stared and started to laugh. Ahaha, <laughs> dear subject, you are quite the entertainer. How could a race of anything live inside our mane? It is composed of a magnificent field of stars, galaxies and nebulae, all swirling around inside a cosmic mass of light and solar waves. Yes, all of that is true, Ruby Shell said, but that is also why we're dealing with a very si serious situation, because if I'm correct, this race has spacefaring capabilities. Luna chuckled. <laughs> How interesting. We see no reason why would there would be anything a small explosion ripped apart ripped apart a star in, inside Luna's mane. The ensuing detonation sent a miniature shockwave into the surrounding space as the color of her hair, hair turned from a deep blue to a darker purple with the blast of light and energy. Luna stood open mouth. What was that? he yelled. Looks like an orbital space cannon ripped apart a nearby star. Luna, not only do you have a race of interstellar beings living inside your mane, but they appear to be at war. Ah! Luna grabbed her mane and, the, and eyed the remnants of the small particle explosion. Who is doing this? I don't know, but I can figure out some details about this race if you're willing to answer a few questions. Yes, anything. How often do you wash your mane? Luna put her hair down and turned away. Her face grew red. Uh... When was the last time you washed it? Ruby asked. Luna scratched the ground in front of her with a hoof. Our main does not take the water very well. It is made of space. Why would we need to attend to it? Space attends to itself. Ruby raised an eyebrow. Luna, you're over 1,000 years old. And you've never washed your main? Luna looked away and nodded. No wonder this race has had all this time to move beyond their simple biology and go into the space age. We've given the perfect opportunity to adapt over a long period of time so they can become a spacefaring civilization. Remove them at once! How? Ruby asked. They seem to be really cozy in there, except for that one star they blew up. No! My main first! Luna yelled. Ruby looked at the edge of Luna's hair as it blew without the need for wind. They appear to have set up a wealth of mining colonies on the green-hued green star near the end of known space. They found a mineral ore inside Ulysses? Luna said as she turned to inspect the tip of her hair. You named the stars in your mane? Ruby asked. They both stared as a, as a tiny explosion tore through the mining ships as it made its way th out of the star of Ulysses. Ruby gasped. Sabotage! Get out of our main! 
Luna bellowed as the lunar as the royal cantalot voice echoed through her mane and shook each ship in its place. The fleet of mining vessels turned as a small point of light opened nearby. They shot into the wormhole as it closed behind her, leaving nothing but points of debris floating in Luna's hair. Ha! Even a small race expect, uh, respects the authority of the princess of the night. A circle of light opened in, up in Luna's tail. The company of ships exited into the surrounding space and disappeared within, within a nearby star. Ruby inspected it closely. They appear to have opened a warm, warm, warm gate into your tailverse. Not the southern universe! Luna yelled as she spun wildly, nipping at her own tail. One guard stood, wa stood and watched with wide eyes as, Lu as, prin as the princess grunted and screamed at her own hair. Be gone, vile interlopers! She turned to the guard, who gasped in surprise. Ah! Newbie Gold! Go fetch Celestia at once! Tell her there's a matter of internal security that needs attending to! Go! The guard nodded in confusion and galloped off. Ruby! Get them out! Hold on just a bit. Maybe your sister has some ideas on what to do about this. Less than a minute later, Princess Celestia leapt up the highest tower and sailed to a rest next to Luna. Yes, my dear sister, you spoke of an urgent matter. There is war going on, Luna said. Celestia's eyes widened. Oh no, I have feared this. Where is this war? Inside our main! Celestia did not move for a few moments. Her eyes were expressionless and her gaze was unreadable. She blinked a few times at the sight of her constant, uh, at her si sister's constant dancing in place as she turned, nipped at her own hair, and then stared back at Celestia with the ears down and eyes full of sorrow. They blew up Sophocles! Luna said pitifully. Who? Princess Celestia asked. Ruby stepped forward. I think that's the name of one of her stars in inside her main. You named the stars inside your mane. Celestia glanced at the northern universe that was Celestia and that was Luna's hair. And now they're inside our tail! Luna fell to the ground and began rolling in the dirt. Ruby immediately rushed to her side. Careful, your majesty. Such an aggressive a tactic may be considered an act of war. What is going on inside your hair? Luna, Celestia asked. Ruby walked up to Celestia and as Luna continued rolling on the ground behi behind the sea pony. A great wall of dust formed as Ruby spoke. Apparently, her sister never washed her hair, and as a result, a race of sentient microbeings have taken up residence. Researching and perfected the use of space travel, and now started an intergalactic conflict where they are using orbital pulse cannons to battle across the depths of her main burst. They already destroyed one star and attacked the mining colony on Ulysses. If they don't come to a peaceful solution soon, the entire universe and Luna's hair may be at stake. They're bombing Juno! Luna said as a small black of small black puffs of smoke stood suspended in space within the center of her tail. She began to roll on the ground even more furiously. Is there no way of coming to peace talks? Celestia asked the sea pony. I'm not sure, Yubrichel said. The fighting is intense, and I'm sure the mining colony at Ulysses was a civ civilian target. The two sides of this conflict may be already attempting such talks. Wash them out! Flood the universe with torrential shampoo showers! Luna yelled amidst the dust cloud. Ruby turned to the princess. Their ships may be already coded against such an assault, and we might, ad might end up wiping out civilian targets in the process. Such a maneuver would hinder our options at peace. Right, Celestia said, and I don't think the extermination of an entire race would sit well with any pony. They are lies, Luna yelled. They don't count. Ah! A small black hole opened near the edge of known space in Luna's tail. They've activated a doomsday weapon, Ruby said as she inspected the growing darkness at the tip of Luna's sovereign universe. We have to act fast. Dear sister, Luna said as she, uh, Celestia said as she approached, I can't destroy them without harming an entire race, but we can sever the problem from you. We are going to have to remove all the hair on your, on your tail and mane. No! Luna yelled as she turned to stare at the base, bas, baseball sized black hole now making its way further across her tail bird. It must be done, Celestia motioned to her guard, newbie gold, as he ran into the castle and came back with a pair of diamond scissors. These can cut the hair of any pony, even mine, Celestia said. Hold still, Luna. 
Luna stared at the night sky, and Celestia stood next to her. The bald head and hairless tail knelt as of the princess of the night made her, her tear-filled eyes even all the more sad. Celestia sat next to her sister and hugged her close. I am sorry war was declared inside your hair, the ruler of Equestria said. Luna said nothing and did not turn to look to her sister. I have a present for you, Celestia said. She presented a gilded box to her sister and placed it in front of her. Luna looked down, opened it, and peered in shock. She turned to her sister, whose mane and tail were now half their length, though she smiled brightly. Luna picked up the replacement mane and tail, made of every hue of the sunrise, and put them on. The tail sat loosely on a small, nearly invisible bow. I feel... strange. Wait, Luna asked. Did you wash? Yes, Celestia said, every day. It's not that hard, really. She hugged her sister as Luna suddenly looked up. Where is my old hair? Somewhere in space, far past the moon by now. I wouldn't worry about it. Luna gazed at the night sky and thought of her stars. The end. That was Luna, there's a sentient race living inside your mane. Um, let's see, we're gonna take a 20 minute break once more, since 4 is just too short. And apparently there's some audio problems, but I'll see to it that I get that fixed. So see you guys in 19 minutes at half past the hour.